name is Jodie Bunting and welcome to my brand new podcast. Uh, and what better guest to have as my first one than my daughter Phoebe! <laughs> right, so I'm a holistic lifestyle coach, uh, kind of a personal trainer, online personal trainer, but my daughter Phoebe is actually just qualified as a personal trainer. Um, so who is Phoebe? Tell us all about you. So uh, I am a personal trainer at Everlast in Derby. I just recently started, but I am absolutely loving it uh, and just wanting to help out more people. And when did you qualify? What you qualified in? So I have the level two fitness instructing qualification. So I have also been teaching some classes as well. I've got one on a Monday night there. Uh, and then I've got a level three qualification in personal training, which means that I can do one to one and small group PTing as well. Uh, and then I'm also registered with Simspa, uh, which means that I've just got a bit of those um, official guidelines through there as well. Uh, and yeah, I think that was all you asked me. <laughs> now, people will notice straight away. You don't say A up middle. I know I don't say A up middle quite often, but your accent's not quite like mine. Why is that? So I was actually born in Derby, uh, but I lived down in Somerset for about 10 years. I think I moved there when I was about four or five. And then I've just moved back up here in the last six months. So yes, I have got a bit of a Somerset twang. <laughs> Which is nice. I like it. Makes you individual. Um, so where are you personal training at? So it's at Everlast in Derby, uh, which is on Pride Park. It's a really nice gym. If you've not been there before, they've got a pool as well. So I definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't been there before. And what's the team like there? You're having fun? Yeah, so much fun. Everyone there is so nice. Uh, yeah, I, I really recommend that gym so much if you've not tried it before. Uh, they've got some great deals on at the moment. So yeah, get down to Everlast in Derby. Now, I did used to teach there. And what always amazed me was, yes, kind doing classes are kind of all the same. But there's just something about the members at Everlast. They're just more fun they just like got more bite in life so yeah, totally. hopefully that's what you're you're feeling there yeah, yeah so when it comes to pt what do you actually offer uh so it's part of it is obviously the personal training where you can come and we can do the exercises in the gym uh, but I can also offer you other support as well because I was a weight loss coach for the last three years with Weight Watchers uh, I can support you with a lot of the stuff around nutrition as well uh, and then also I can offer you some check-ins midweek so keeping you motivated when you're not in the gym it's really important to me not just how you're doing with your exercise but how you're doing in your everyday life and those other habits that you're building as well so yeah training together nutrition advice and then check-ins midweek as well and when I worked for Weight Watchers I learned so much stuff so what do you think your biggest kind of life lessons you learned from working for WW? Probably that it's so much about mindset I think a lot of people who give weight loss and nutrition advice they tell you what to do but they don't actually realize that a lot of people already know what to do it's not the knowing what to do it's how to do it and how to get yourself motivated and in that right mindset so I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned is how to reframe your mind and how to help someone else to get motivated as well and why did you become a personal trainer why did you want to do it so for myself, um, I first started getting into fitness when I was 18, and that's because I was in a really bad place. I struggled all through my childhood with my mental health, um, and it really reached a peak when I was 17. Um, really, really bad depression I had, really low self-esteem. Uh, and that was when I joined a gym, reached a point where I was like, you know what, I need to do something about this. I can't live like this anymore. Uh, and I actually joined with a friend, she came with me once and then I just started going on my own um, and yeah it all just went from there and it started to improve my mental health the way I felt about myself and so many other things in my life started to come together because I was focused on myself and improving not my body it wasn't about my body it was about my health especially my mental health but it became about all of those other things as well improving my lifestyle improving my body and now four years later it's just something that I'm so passionate about and I want to help other people to overcome their mental health whatever challenges it is that they're going through in life with fitness because it's amazing and everybody should be getting in on this 
Now, I think many people who know you are surprised when they hear that you've had mental health issues purely because, you know, at school you were an A-star student. You know, from the outside looking in, everybody thought, wow, she's sorted for life. Little did they know it, inside it was a completely different story, wasn't it? And I think it's the same for most people, though, that struggle with mental health. You know, it's not something that you can see on the outside. And actually, when you struggle with mental health, you don't want to talk about it. It's it's often something that you feel embarrassed about. I felt very ashamed because I knew that I had a nice life and I knew that I should be happy. Yeah. So I didn't want to say I'm actually really unhappy and, you know, I, I feel this way because I thought other people would judge me and say that I was attention seeking and things like that. So to talk about it, it, it takes a lot of guts. Um, and I really feel for anyone else who's in that position right now, because I know where you've been and it's not a nice place to be. Uh, but when you start making those changes, especially the habits and lifestyle, like with diet and exercise, that honestly does so much to help you. Um, so that's definitely what I'd encourage anyone to do in that situation. And within the family, you've also experienced like strokes and other health issues. Yeah. How, how has that made you improve as well want to improve absolutely that's a massive motivation for me when I look at my grandparents uh, there's a lot of illnesses um, that could have been prevented things like stroke uh, dementia I know there's not firm evidence to what causes dementia but I do believe personally that it is partially from lifestyle especially alcohol um, usage so that is a big motivator for me as well when I look at my family not wanting to end up in a position where I can't look after myself or where I don't have mental capacity that definitely drives me a lot as well wanting to be healthy. Myself, my mom, we've all got diabetes type 2 yeah. and luckily enough you actually worked on the Weight Watchers diabetes contract didn't you? Did yeah. you learn anything useful there? so much and that was actually my favorite part about working for Weight Watchers was our NHS contract so anybody who had been found as being pre-diabetic so when their blood sugar levels were creeping up to the point where they were getting close to type 2 diabetes they would be referred through to us for a program that was designed to help reduce those levels and it was really successful we managed to help a lot of people to avoid developing diabetes that's probably the proudest work that I've done in my life and I would say a top tip for anyone who's in that position or has type 2 diabetes is to really look at the things that you're consuming and what has sugar in it. Because so many things that we have in our day to day life, we don't even realise it's got sugar in it, especially things like drinks, you know, energy drinks, soft drinks, um, all that stuff usually and I said it's a zero one has sugar in it uh things that we don't think of as well like vaping I know a lot of people vape now instead of smoking I was shocked at that I didn't realize yeah a lot of the vape liquid has sugar in it too so that can even cause you to develop type 2 diabetes and then a lot of foods that aren't sweet I think that was uh, the biggest shock for a lot of people that came onto the program saying oh but you know I I like savory things so I don't understand why I've got high blood sugars but actually even the savory stuff has a lot of sugar in it so um, checking labels or using a tracker like my fitness pal it can really help you to become more aware of what things have got sugar in and then you know where you can make those reductions and cut down now, was there anything that motivated you to start exercising? Yeah, it was absolutely my mental health. That is the number one reason. Um, and I think I knew at the time that part of the reason I felt rubbish was because I didn't like the way that my body looked. Um, and it all just it all came together when I started exercising and seeing progress. And it wasn't straight away. I think that's the important thing to remember is when you start exercising or changing your lifestyle, magic doesn't happen overnight it it takes a long time and you have to be patient but as soon as you start seeing those results it becomes um amazing and you will realize that it's all been worth it and it will really make you want to push through so if you're just starting out right now and you're thinking what's the point nothing's happening i'm not seeing any progress just keep going have faith in the process and faith in yourself and you will start to see those results eventually I feel like we're at some sort of motivational conference. <laughs> this is great. This is really great. Right. 
veganism okay you've been a vegan for a year tell us all about it what how did you get into it and what are the benefits that you're feeling right now so I never thought that I would be a vegan um I I wouldn't say I was against it but I was very much I didn't understand I thought it was just a a bit of a pain really when someone said oh sorry I can't have that I'm vegan um but (laughs) it was it was a challenge last year I don't know if you guys might have heard of veganuary Um, And I literally just approached it as a 30 day challenge in January that I was going to go vegan. It was more just so I could lose a bit of weight, to be honest, I'd put on over Christmas. Um, But as I started researching vegan recipes, I started looking into some of the other things around why it can be good for your health, why it's good for the environment, why it's good for animals. And it became um, a no brainer to me that I should stick with veganism, especially because a lot of the food I was having actually tasted a lot better than things that I used to eat before. I was having to put more thought into what I was having and more spices and more flavorings because the meat had been taken out. I was just having to think more about my meals. Um, And I would honestly never go back now. I've seen so many benefits. I have more energy. I feel better about what I'm eating. I feel proud of what I'm eating. I know it sounds crazy, but because I've made these massive changes over the last year and stuck with them, I feel really proud of myself. Uh, So I would never go back now. McDonald's McPlant. Is it this or is it this? (sighs) It it basically tastes the same as a Big Mac, I honestly think. And other people have said it as well. I know my gran had one and she was like, tastes exactly the same. So and it's the same with a lot of the vegan stuff that that you eat. You you won't even notice a massive difference. So don't be against it. Give it a try. The reason I'm particularly proud of you being vegan is not because that you are vegan, but you're going for the unprocessed route, which Mm -hmm. is kind of a big mistake a lot of new vegans make, isn't it? They do just go to McDonald's because that's the only thing they can think of is vegan. Yeah, I think the best approach with that is to view these kind of processed vegan foods as like a transition. Um, So as you're moving away from meat, it's a good idea to use things like, you know, the chicken free Kievs and those kind of meat alternatives But if you're staying on those things long term, they are highly processed foods. Um, So it's not something that you want to have a lot of in your diet. I'd recommend as you switch to veganism, trying to go for less processed things like beans and lentils and rice and all of those natural foods, um, because it will be healthier for you. But if you are going vegan just for ethical reasons or just for the animals, you know, it's fine to go with a bit more of the processed stuff. But if you're trying to be healthier as well, try and go for the more natural vegan products. Now, what is your beginner's eating advice for everybody? Do you think everybody should go vegan? Is that the answer to the obesity epidemic? No, I mean, I think it would help. And I would love to say, yes, everybody can be a vegan. But I know it's not that simple, especially if you live with other people or if you cook for other people who don't like vegan food or are fussy eaters. It's very difficult to make that change for yourself. Um, So I would say it's not for everyone. I know some people have allergies to things like soy and intolerances too that would make it quite difficult. Um, But my beginner eating advice, I think, would just be to make small changes. Don't try and go on some crazy diet that you know you're not going to be able to stick to long term. Do something which incorporates some foods that you like, but just getting a little bit healthier. Something that I like to think about is the 80-20 principle, which is that 80% of the time you're having your healthy options you're doing your exercise you're doing those healthy habits and then that other 20% you can do whatever you like you know you can have alcohol or junk food or whatever it is that you enjoy not excessively but that 20% is those nice things and it helps you to stay balanced and then it means that you're not 100% off it and then 100% on it if you've got that 80 20 and that balance you can actually stick with your healthy lifestyle long term which is where you're really going to see the benefits of it 
And what's your advice for beginners to exercise? Should everybody join a gym? You know, what is the solution? Mm, I mean, I would say yes, everybody join the gym because it's great at the gym. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I know that's not realistic for everyone, especially if you've got mental health issues, you know, social anxiety, that kind of thing. It can be really intimidating. Uh, so again, I would say small changes. If you don't feel like you're ready to step into a gym or to a fitness class or get a personal trainer, just start walking more or sitting less or stretching, something really simple and easy. But if you do feel like you're ready, then I would really recommend getting a PT or going to a fitness class so you've got that professional who can show you how to do things properly. Because I think it's, for me, this was a massive worry, and I know it is for a lot of people when they first step in a gym, is they don't want to do something wrong and they don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to use a piece of equipment wrong or do an exercise wrong and they feel like everyone would be staring and laughing at them. So if you're worried and you feel like you don't know what you're doing, get a professional to help you, you know, go to a class, get a PT. That's the best way to get a really good program and get the foundations that are going to help you to succeed. A lot of people also think gyms are just full of fitties. They're not, are they? Especially Dee uh, Everlast. It's, you know, I'm not saying they're all overweight, but there are a lot of people there that do need to lose weight and do need to get fit. You know, it's not Absolutely. a, it's not a fitties gym, is it? Well, I would say it's the same at every gym though. And yeah. you know what, as someone walking in, you might look at everyone in there and think, God, they're all so fit. You know, they're all so strong. But I guarantee each person has had their own struggles. They've started training for a reason. And normally it is because they don't like the way they look or they don't feel good about themselves. So every single person in that gym is there improving themselves and actually they're probably not, not bothered at all about what you look like coming in. They're looking at themselves and that's their competition. So don't be intimidated by other people that you see in the gym. And to be honest, most of the people that I've met in gyms have been absolutely lovely and they just want to help you and they understand that you're there for a reason and they relate to you with that. So please don't be intimidated by the people in the gym. Now you're teaching some fitness classes as well, aren't you? Yep. Again, do you think that's a good thing to beginners or do you think beginners are Absolutely. better to go to personal training? I mean, it depends. I think if you are quite introverted, you might not want to go to a class just because it can be a lot. You know, it, some of them, I, I don't want to say all of them, but some of them can be a little bit cliquey. You know, if people have been going together for years, you might feel a little bit outcast when you first go to a fitness class. Um, if you feel like that might be too much for you, then it might be a good idea to see a PT. But other people, you know, if you are quite bubbly and you want to be around other people when you exercise, then go to a fitness class because they're so fun um and I think there's a bit of a competitive element as well when you're in a class I definitely push myself a lot harder when I'm in a class <laughs> yeah. because other people are around me um so both really really good options but it's it really depends on your personality which one you think is right for you and we've talked about diet we've talked about exercise mm -hmm. do you think there's any other lifestyle advice you'd give to your beginner clients yes i think so going back to my roots at ww i would also add in sleep focus and focusing on mindset as well i think sleep is often neglected but very very important if you're not sleeping well you're not going to feel good and then you're not going to eat well and then you're not going to exercise. So make sure that you're focusing on your sleep, trying to get between seven and nine hours. I know if at the moment you're only getting four or five hours, that seems crazy. Just make some small changes, trying to get six and then trying to get seven. Um, but focusing on your sleep, trying to spend more time in bed, trying to unwind before bed as well. And then when it comes to mindset, I think the biggest thing is changing the way that you speak to yourself in your head. And I know this is sometimes a constant challenge. I know for me, even now, you know, even after years of focusing on this, I have days where I'm horrible to myself in my head and I have to do that little check in and say, hang on a second. You know, what are you doing? Why are you saying this to yourself? But it's such an important thing because if you're criticizing yourself in your head, if you're saying, oh, you're never going to be fit, you're never going to be strong, I don't know why you're bothering with this, all those things become true if you keep saying those things to yourself. So try and change that inner dialogue. Doesn't mean you have to start saying, oh, I love myself and I'm amazing, but just 
not being mean, just saying, actually, that's not true, because the things that we think are not facts. They're not the truth. So don't let that dictate the way that you act. Try and change that inner dialogue and it will really help you to build new habits. And finally, you are offering some free PT taster sessions at Everlast. How yeah. can people get in touch with you? So I'm on Instagram. Uh, that's at Phoebe Hope PT. Uh, you can also email me at Phoebe Hope PT at gmail.com. Uh, those are the two main ways that you can get in contact with me. Uh, I think I've also got my number on my Insta as well. So if you want to WhatsApp message me or message me on there, then please do. Um, and yeah, you can come along for a free session at Everlast in Derby. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to pay an entrance fee or anything like that. Um, and we can just have a taster, see if you enjoy it or not. If you do, then great. You can sign up and, you know, we can have more sessions. If not, then no obligations at all. And you don't have to commit to anything. You put a stretching Instagram video yesterday. Was it yesterday yeah. or the day before? My mum said, oh, she is flexible. <laughs> it's from years of practice so it's the same with all of this stuff you know it it uh, when I first if I first would have tried to do that video four years ago I couldn't have got into those positions and I probably would have felt really jealous if I saw someone who could I would have been really annoyed at them um but it's just from practice and you can do anything your body is amazing but you just have to train it that's the key to in, unlock all of this potential that you have so if you have any goals, write them down or set them out and you can start working on them straight away. An amazing final word. Thank you so much, <laughs> Phoebes, for joining Thanks. me on this first podcast. We'll see you again next time. Please remember to like, give me a comment, share with your friends and of course, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.